Hello. Today I will talk about LibreOffice SDK examples overhaul. I'm Hossein Nuri the developer community architect for the Document Foundation TDF. So these are the contents that I will present today. After a short self-introduction, I will talk about LibreOffice SDK, its use cases, and the programming languages that can be used with it. Then we will talk about LibreOffice SDK examples. Most of these examples should be compiled and executed using shell scripts right now. And you have to use CYG Win on Windows. But it is also possible to use modern build tools like QMake and CMake. And that's what I'm talking about today. After talking a little bit, I will show you a demo and after demo we will talk about some of the future work like porting examples from different languages to each other and also adding QMIC and CMIC support to these examples. I'm Hossein Nuriha, PhD in Information Technology I am the developer community architect for the Document Foundation. I'm a developer, university lecturer, and FOSS advocate. So if you want to get started in LibreOffice development, you can contact me and I will try to help you. My email is hossein at sign libreoffice.org and you can also find me in IRC room LibreOffice Dev in Libra chat network by the name of Jose. So these are some of the use cases of LibreOffice SDK which is essentially a part of LibreOffice that helps you to communicate with LibreOffice via its API. You can create applications that work with Office formats, different office programs from different companies across the world. As you know, LibreOffice supports many office formats from different companies from different countries. Also, you can write extensions that extend the functionalities of LibreOffice. And at last, just like the first use case, you can create converters that read and write different formats and convert them together. There are several programming languages that can be used with LibreOffice SDK. Python is a great choice because it's easy to set up. A Python interpreter is usually shipped with LibreOffice and you can write simple programs very fast and run and test them easily. Also you can use C++ and using C++ is important because it helps you to better understand the language that is used to write LibreOffice itself. Also Java is used many examples are in Java. LibreOffice Basic is something that is used inside LibreOffice and is also used for communicating with LibreOffice API. .NET languages like C# -sharp and VB.NET are also usable, but you should note that the latest .NET Core is not usable right now. OLE and ActiveX are also usable. So, what about examples? Examples showcase the LibreOffice SDK capabilities. They are there to show you the capabilities that SDK can provide. They are in many languages, most of them are in Java, but there are examples in Python, C++, etc. And they work with LibreOffice through its API. So a working LibreOffice process should be present in order to be able to respond to the requests. And you should note that not all the 
LibreOffice examples, Azteca examples are extensions. Some of them are standalone applications that communicate with LibreOffice. So where to find them? These examples are distributed both with the LibreOffice source code and also the binary distribution. So if you go to LibreOffice.org, you can download both the LibreOffice and the Azteca. And if you use the source code, you can find ODK slash examples via, via core repository. And also there is a dedicated SDK examples repository in git.libreoffice.org that contains some examples. If you have installed LibreOffice and LibreOffice SDK, you can find SDK slash examples folder that contains all of these examples. So what do they do? They actually do various things. We focus on C++ examples today, so I will talk about some of these examples. Document Loader and Draw are the LibreOffice examples. You can find them inside ODK slash examples slash CBP inside the source code. And also they are shipped with LibreOffice binary Azteca. And Document Loader essentially loads the sample document. The draw creates some circles and other drawings inside LibreOffice Draw. And the last one, Converter, is something that I've written and you can find it in my GitHub page that you can see the address. It essentially converts ODT or other file format to PDF. So how to compile and run these examples? These are the instructions that are recommended today but after that I will talk about using modern build tools so first of all you should run LibreOffice if you're using the latest version you should invoke LibreOffice 7.2 but after that you should provide some options in order to make LibreOffice listen to the incoming connections as you can see, it's dash dash accept equal socket, comma, port equal 2083, semicolon, URP, semicolon. After that, you should go to SDK folder, cd slash opt slash LibreOffice 7.2 slash SDK. Then you invoke the um, uh, a script that sets up the environment variable, set SDK env underline unix, then you go to examples folder and invoke make. As you can see, I'm uh, trying to compile and execute document loader. And after that, by invoking make document loader dot run, I can actually run the example. So this is the result of set sdk env underline unix a script that is usable in Linux and Unix. So as you can see, uh, the SDK folder, the office folder, and the path to several utilities and also C++ compiler and Java are set here and also the output directory is inside your home directory. I don't use Java here so it is um, not used here. On Windows the instructions are somehow the same. First of all you should uh, invoke sofficeexe with the same parameters then uh, you can use uh, the uh, VS2019 command prompt or you set the compiler path manually I go to uh, program files the buffer in uh, a terminal and after that I add the CYG win uh, binary path and after that, I invoke set SDK in the underlying windows that, that, that sets the environment variables on windows. Uh, you should be aware that in some situations, uh, when you try to run the examples, it uh, complains about the lack of merged LO.dll. So if that happens, you should set the URE underlying bootstrap variable manually. Uh, it is uh, essentially uh, the path to the fundamental INI 
uh, file on Windows and in Linux, uh, it's the path to fundamental uh, RC file. After that, you go to the folder and invoke make, and just like Linux, after that, you invoke make document loader dot run. So this is the result of uh, setting up environment in Windows. As you can see, uh, the utilities are provided by CYGWIN and the C++ compiler path uh, points to uh, Microsoft Visual uh, Studio 2019 compiler. So the requirements are essentially LibreOffice plus Azteca and also C++ compiler but there are a lot of other dependencies like make, zip, cat, set, etc. These are provided by CYGWIN for Windows and uh, a lot of things are done via shell scripts. Both the compilation and execution are uh, done by the um, uh, shell script to set up environment variables. But what about modern build tools? What if Requirements would be only LibreOffice plus Steka plus C++ compiler and a modern build tool like CMake or QMake. In fact, this is possible. The main benefit of using CMake is that you can use ID of your choice for development, uh, like Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, Qt Creator, Xcode, and many others support CMake natively. So with CMake, you don't have to rely on shell scripts, but you can use uh, these build tools inside your IDE of your choice. But you should know that generating headers, setting up environment variables, and running the applications are mostly done by CMake and QMake with some tricks. These are some of the environment variables that are used inside LibreOffice. Salius with CL plugin is something that uh, sets the UI that is used with LibreOffice where by using Gen or GTK or uh, things like that you can set the desired UI Unopath is something that is used uh, with some of the examples and I've discussed URE underlying bootstrap and as you can see it points to the fundamental RC in Linux. So let's see these uh, things in action in a demo. Let's see some of these examples. I've essentially copied some of these examples to this folder so that I can compile and run them inside this folder. Let's go to document loader example and I'm creating a build folder. I'm going inside it. I invoke CMake for the top uh, for the uh, upper folder and I invoke make everything goes just fine but in order to be able to run this example first I should set URE bootstrap so URE bootstrap I'm exporting the URE ex, uh, bootstrap equals to essentially the path name I've talked about so this is okay but I have to um, have a process, uh, a LibreOffice process in order to uh, work with it. So I'm executing LibreOffice with the parameters I've discussed, and these are the examples I was working on before. So after that, uh, I can see the binary here. I uh, invoke it with uh, one parameter that is the file I want to load. This is test.odt and as you can see the separate process document loader could be able to load 
a file inside LibreOffice. That's it. It worked just fine. But what if I don't want to um, use this environment variable? I don't want to build uh, from command line. I can, uh, as you see, export dash n URE bootstrap, and as I'm searching for URE and bootstrap, I see that. Uh, I no longer see that it is set because I've used export dash n to unexport it. Um, but I have to edit the file and add some things to this file. So I go to the main, as you can see, uh, we're using some special main here. And this is the line I have to add. And then you, as you can see, RTL bootstrap set is something that can be used to set this variable that is used inside um, this STEC application. Uh, also, I have to include RTL slash bootstrap That's it. I invoke make and as you can see, the document loader example was built just fine. Uh, if I uh, start LibreOffice again, I can invoke this application. I should provide uh, the file I want to load. And as you can see, it worked just fine. So it is possible to use uh, CMake with these examples. Also, QMake can be used, and I will show you this later. Uh, you can use uh, QMake and CMake inside your favorite IDE, and without relying on these uh, scripts, you can build and run the applications. Let's see another example. So I go to the top folder of examples, I go to draw and I create a build folder, I go inside it, I invoke CMake and it configures just fine and it builds just fine. So in order to run this example I have to set another environment variable. It is the UNO path. And as you can see, it's the path to the uh, LibreOffice binaries. After that, I just invoke draw. So the fun fact here was that uh, I didn't have a LibreOffice process waiting uh, for the command. So uh, this example use, uses another bootstrapping method that doesn't need a working LibreOffice process, but uh, if there is no such process, it actually invokes it and creates such process using the binaries. So that's it. Um, please note that uh, setting UNO path is somehow different with uh, the previous uh, variable. Um, you can also use commands that set this environment variable inside uh, the C++ example, but I'm not uh, talking more about it. Uh, let's take a look inside the uh, CMake file that we have here. So it essentially contains uh, standard uh, CMake commands. Uh, here we have a LO root variable here that we use for um, setting different environment variables. We're essentially uh, setting include directories 
and their different uh, include directories. Some of them are inside the root, but some of them are uh, created uh, from the headers that uh, we have inside our build folder. So if we go to the end of file, we will see that uh, we are using CPU Maker to generate these headers from of api.rdb so uh, there are a lot of header files now inside the build folder also we are linking our application to uh, some of the libraries that uh, are available inside libreoffice folder so that's it and um, it make look it may it may look somehow complicated but uh, it is essentially the same for different examples. Instructions for compiling and running these examples inside Windows is not much different from Windows. First of all, I should uh, run LibreOffice with the same parameters that I had in Linux and after that I can uh, do the next steps I go to uh, I uh, invoke set sdk env underline windows dot bat the parameters that you see here are set by me before as you can see uh, the Utilities are provided by CYGVIN and the C++ compiler is Microsoft 2019 uh, compiler. After that, I go to Examples folder, CPP, and then Document Loader, and I invoke Make. And as you can see, I've built this example before. So I want to uh, run the example but uh, if uh, the uh, URE uh, environment variable URE bootstrap is not set, you will see that uh, it will complain about the lack of merged LO, that DLL. So I set it. And after that, as you can see, uh, I can invoke make document loader dot run. So it essentially loads the file and because it is inside the program files, it is redundant. That's it. But as I've told you before, it is possible to use uh, IDEs like Qt Creator. So let's use it. I will open an example LO converter that I've talked about before. Um, it gets uh, an ODT file and converts it to PDF. It contains both the CMake file and also the dat pro file that is used in QMake. So let's uh, run it it uh, compiles and run so it says uh, the LibreOffice is not there so let's start LibreOffice first and then if you run it you can see that it says output tested PDF generated so what is this file let's go to the source code if you look at the source code you see that uh, it takes test.odt as the document URL and test.pdf as the PDF URL that is the output. Everything is set inside the program, the connection string, the uh, URE bootstrap, you don't have to set it inside command line, and the other functions and methods that are used to create the PDF. So let's see the uh, input and output. I just close the LibreOffice and I open 
um, the test dot ODT. This is the same ODT file. And this is the output. So as you could see, we can use uh, modern build tools like CMake and QMake uh, for compiling and running these examples. And this uh, has a lot of benefits. Uh, we don't rely on uh, command line to compile and uh, run the applications. You can do everything inside your IDE and uh, you don't need CYGV on Windows so I think this can be very helpful for those who want to develop using uh, C++ and LibreOffice stack. I hope you have enjoyed the demo so these are the future works the road ahead is described here this demo was only a proof of concept, so the same thing can be done for other examples. And there are a lot of things remaining to do. First of all, we can port other examples to different languages. So the draw example is in Java and in C++, the document loader is in Java, C++, and Python, but not all of the examples are in every language. This is defined as an easy hack, so it means that you can help. And also, it is possible to add QMake and CMake support for other examples. At last, we talk about some of the recommended readings for LibreOffice SDK. The first one, Java LibreOffice Programming Book, or JLOP, is a book written by Dr. Andrew Davison, and it is a great book that discusses various aspects of LibreOffice SDK, and it uses Java. Also, you should note that a lot of good documentation can be found inside API that LibreOffice.org, so every SDK developer should refer to this address. Also, inside this address, api.libreoffice.org slash doc slash tools, you will find a lot of good descriptions about the tools that can be used for LibreOffice SDK development. And the last one, LibreOffice extension website is a place that you can find great extensions and their source code and this is something that can help you to create extensions by learning stuff from other extension developers and others that have used LibreOffice API. Thank you very much. That's it.